And open your Bibles this morning to Romans chapter 12. If you don't have a Bible and you need one, we'll make sure you get one if you'll raise your hand. I also want to, I, I failed to mention last week, just in the hype of everything, but uh, Pastor Kim and I have the privilege to have welcomed into this world our eighth little grandbaby. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. <laughs> little boy, Lindsay, which she's still at home. Well, she'll be recuperating for a while. He was only 10 pounds, 7 ounces. <laughs> 22 and a half inches long. We mounted him already. <laughs> we just mounted him right there on the spot. That's all the fishermen got that. Hey, Lindsay, at home. Oh, there you are right there. I see you now. And um, Corey back in the back, back there. Where's Corey? There you go. Happy daddy, huh? Uh, 10 pounds, 7 ounces is Brooks Carter Childs. Hallelujah. Amen? Amen. Number eight. So uh, where's, where's Tanner? I see Carly. Hey, Tanner escaped. I said, I see Carly. So well, no, no rush, no rush. But, but uh, I feel like I feel pretty certain we'll have at least 10 grandchildren. You know what I'm saying? Romans chapter 12, I want to talk to you this morning, a message entitled, A Living Sacrifice. Everybody say, I'm, I'm a living sacrifice. sacrifice. Romans chapter 12, let's begin in verse 1. If you're there, say, go ahead. You want me to wait a second? Say, hang on. Okay, I know who that was, so we're moving on. Romans chapter 12, verse 1, which happens to be our memory verse for the week. We have a memory verse around here every week, so that you can memorize at least 52 scriptures a year. Amen. Verse 1, Romans 12, 1 says, it's Paul speaking, I appeal to you therefore, brethren, and beg of you in the view of all the mercies of God to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and devoted to God, which is your reasonable service. Now listen, God doesn't only care about our spiritual condition, He also cares and is concerned about our physical condition. Amen? There's a physical realm that we live in. You understand that right now. Everything is, I mean, the spiritual is obviously very important, but we live in a physical place. We live in a physical body. And sometimes we can get so caught up, and I don't mean this in a negative sense, we can get so caught up in the spiritual that we neglect the physical. How many of you are here today? We have six physical people here today. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So what I'm saying is serving God is both a spiritual and a physical thing. Amen. It says there in verse 1, we're to present our bodies. See, you, you are a physical body. You are here today. You are to present your physical body, your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and devoted to God, which is your reasonable service. In other words, you're to be physically involved, physically active in a physical church, which is the body, physically active. Amen. So what God is saying is this is just your basic, most reasonable service. Actually, one translation says it like this. This is the least thing that you can do for God, just to be active in the body. Verse 2, Romans 12, 2, we'll continue. It says, do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed or changed by the renewing of your mind. How many of you know God wants you to change your thinking? You're stinking thinking sometimes. You know, people, you've heard this before. People will say, well, you're just brainwashing people. Yeah. Washing all that mess out of there. That, that worldly junk that's gotten a hole. Come on now. We got to wash that out. By the renewing, this is the end of verse 2, by the renewing of your mind so that you may prove for yourselves what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Verse 3. For by the grace given to me, I warn everyone among you not to estimate or think of himself more highly than he ought, but to rate his ability with sober judgment, according to God has dealt to every man the measure of faith. Say, I have some faith. God has dealt to every single one of us, man and woman, a measure of faith. How many of you realize faith is power? Faith is power. Amen. It's a spiritual force, and it's been given to each and every one of us for the reason to accomplish a task for the Lord. Not just so you can 
Boy, I got a lot of faith. Well, what are you doing with your faith? It's there to accomplish something for the kingdom of God. Do you remember God called Moses out to, I mean, an enormous task to lead the people uh, uh, out of Egypt, out of bondage, out of slavery. But when God spoke to Moses, the first thing he did, when he, he put the call on his life, the first thing Moses did, he starts telling God why he can't accomplish such a major task. I can't do, I can't even talk. How many of you, you feel like that sometimes? There's no, don't call me up here to speak. I would just like, well, you're looking at one the same way. Are you hearing me? So Moses says, I, in other words, Moses is looking at his inabilities. He's looking at his insufficiencies. Come on now, somebody. Amen? In other words, Moses didn't see himself qualified to lead anybody anywhere. And I already made mention, but you're looking at somebody that was in the same boat. You start looking, you get called to a particular thing to do something for the Lord, and you go, I, I can't do this. No, there is no way I can do that. I mean, you understand what I'm talking about? But whom God calls, he will equip. Will it be easy? Well, I'm not saying it's going to be easy. But it'll be fulfilling. And I'm not saying it's going to be hard in the sense that, you know, you're going to dread it. But things that the Lord calls you to do, it can, man, that can stretch you out there. How many of you in here besides me, the Lord sometimes has to push you? lasso you around the neck and pull come on now you can do this i'll help you the thing you need to understand is it's not about your abilities it's not about your qualifications it's about your what availability are you available are you willing and available to be used by god that's the question i hope the answer is yes but you know you can say yes as they say you can say yes to the cows come home but if you don't put any action with the yes, it's just yes. It don't mean anything. Yes. I read it, Lord. And then the Lord gives you a task, and you're like, well, that's not the one I was looking for. Right? He's deposited something into you. He's, He's placed gifts and anointings in every single person. You mean even me? Yes, you. He's deposited gifts in you. And when he calls you to do something, he's not, he's, not, he's not looking at your lack of qualifications. He's looking at the deposit. Come on, somebody. He's looking at the deposits and the gifts that he's put on the inside. Shalabakata. Glory to God. He's put them in there. Can you say amen? And see, this is what we're told to renew our minds about here. Because just as soon as God calls somebody to do something, you know what we tell him? We tell him why we can't. There's no, I just can't, I can't, I can't. You know what? You might can hide it on the outside. But if you're not fulfilling what God's called you to do, you're miserable on the inside. And you'll start finding things and looking for things to take the place of that. Because you just, I just got to do this, I got to do this, I got to do that. It, what's, what, all that's happening there is you're just trying to get away from I can't do that. Well, let me tell you right, right now, you can't. But with him, you can. Can you say Amen. If we had not followed the call of God, you wouldn't even be sitting in here this morning. Amen. So, you know, you get to a point where you have to understand it's, it's, it's not in, in and of yourself you can't do it. So you don't want get, to get to yourself to where, you know, well, I, I got to get qualified first. I got to get to the point where, and there's nothing wrong with preparing. Don't misunderstand what I'm saying. But you can't prepare enough to be ready to do what God's called you to do. Because if you can do it yourself, then God ain't called you to do it. There'll be a stretching. There'll be a leading and a following that you have to go with the Holy Ghost. Again, nothing wrong with preparing. But you've got to get to a place where you're not, when God qualifies you, then you just be available and to, to, to go do it. Well, I don't know what to do next. Just take a, you just, look, he told Abraham to go. Abraham, like, where? Just go. And when, when you start taking a step, even though, I don't know how, I know what the Lord wants me to do, but I don't know how to start like this. One step. 
And then you go, oh, oh, my God, I see this now. Now I see this. Now I see this. Come on, somebody. That's just too difficult. It, again, I'm not saying it's just a simple, easy, it actually is a simple, easy process. If you'll just step out, doors will start opening. Things will start happening like you, you know, I think back when we, when, which, uh, you know, we're going to have our uh, anniversary up uh, Sunday week, not next week, but the night. And looking back at when we got started, I'm like, how in the world did that happen? How in the world did that happen? You, we just kept taking a step. And, you know, I, it's not that way today. I mean, there was, for several years, I, I, when I got home, on the way home from church on Sunday morning, I, in a, I'm, I'm speaking spiritually, I would take an exit ramp. I'm done. I ain't doing this no more. It's too hard. But I know I can't quit. Well, quit and do what? you got to follow the leading of the Holy Ghost. And, and it does get easier because you begin to, come on now, you begin to understand, okay, I, I'm getting a, I'm, I'm beginning, but just as soon as you begin to understand that he just, psh, yeah, well, i got a little bit more I want you to do. It's always an extension of faith. All, it's always a growing time. Can you say amen? we got to learn to lean on him. we gotta, we got to follow the call. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5, you know this scripture. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to what? Your own understanding. So we have to lean, constantly lean on him. Can you say amen? Verse 3, continue here, Romans 12, the last part of verse 3. God has dealt to every man a measure of faith. Verse 4, for as in one, now watch this now, we, we, we're, he's correlating here the spiritual body, the church body to a natural body. For as in one physical body, we have many parts. Or we have many organs, you know, in the, you got the liver and the kidney and the lungs and the heart and the stomach. And, you know, just, you just have parts of a physical body. And it says all of these parts do not have the same office or they don't have the same function or they don't have the same use. In other words, <coughs> excuse me, your eyes and your ears have two different functions. However, they're both very important. Can you say Amen. Verse 4 says, For as in one physical body we have many parts, and of all the parts, and, and all of these parts do not have the same functions. So verse 5, So we, numerous as we are, are one body in Christ, and individually we are parts of one of another. In other words, we're mutually dependent on one another. That's what it's saying. The measure of faith that's mentioned here in verse 3 is making reference right here to verse 6. Watch this. Having gifts, everybody say, I have a gift. <laughs> gifts are talents or qualities that the Lord's put in you. He said, having gifts that differ according to the grace that God has given us. God has given us a grace. He's given us power. Can you say amen? amen. Every single person in here has a grace from God, a calling from God, a gift from God, a deposit from God, a, an anointing from God. And the calling and the gift that God, listen to me, you have to understand I just, I'm looking at some of you like, I have a gift. I don't feel like I have a gift. Quit, it ain't about a feeling. Yeah, right. If you're born again, God has deposited a gift on the inside of you, period. Amen. And now let me just try to help you because a lot of times the gifts that the Lord places on the inside of you, they will many times run parallel or in unison with just God-given natural talent. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I mean, let's just take an example. Uh, music ministry. You feel like you're, you should be in the music ministry, you know, whether playing an instrument or singing, whatever. Then there's a pretty good chance that you can play an instrument or that you can at least, you know, there's a difference in singing and worshiping. But I want to be a worshiper. Okay, well, do you want to sing? Yes. Well, we've got to try you out first. Because the last thing we need is breaking glass in here. You understand what I'm saying? It, so if you want to be in the, because in, I can worship, but you don't, want, you don't want me up here, I'm telling you right now. So my point is, well, I feel like I'm supposed to be in the music ministry thing. You know, I'm supposed to be a singer and worship on stage and have, then you, you probably have a, a gift to at least carry a pretty decent tune. Come on, somebody. Or, you know, or you're in the ministry of helps. You love to serve. 
I'm, you'll know that you're in the ministry of helps and serving when you serve and people try to think of an example. I know a good example. Many of you know my mother. How many would agree with me that my mother has a gift of serving? So there's no doubt about it. Even to the point to where I don't have that. If I serve you and you abuse me, I ain't serving you no more. <laughs> You're laughing, but some of you say, I mean, you don't, I don't, that's not my gift. I'll serve, but don't, don't step all over me. And then people just step all over my mama. I'm not, not, none of you, none of you. I'm not saying, I'm just saying she's got the gift to serve. It doesn't matter how anybody treats her. You're going to serve. Tell the truth now. Amen. Well, I, and I, I, I already said that I, I'm definitely not, I know, I, I'm not called to the music ministry, not at all. I'm called to worship. Amen. We're all called to worship. Maybe your gift is to administrate in administration. So to be, it'd be, it'd probably be good that you have a liking to manage, you like numbers, you like giving orders to people. How many like to give orders to people? I, I do too. In a positive way. Just ask Pastor Kent. I administrate all the time at home. I'm, I'm going to get off of that right quick. <laughs> so your natural abilities can many times be an indication of what your spiritual assignment is. I mean, do you understand what I'm saying? You take somebody like, uh, oh, he's retired from basketball, big guy. Who? Yeah, yeah, Shaquille O'Neal, yeah. I don't know, what is he, 7'1", 400 pounds, whatever, I don't know, 300, 350 pounds, whatever. Could you see him riding in the Kentucky Derby? Pro probably ain't going to win. He's bigger, <laughs> bigger than the horse. <laughs> but you take a five foot six guy, about 125 pounds. Come on, people. You know, it may making any sense at all. God has given us natural talents, and they can relate into the spirit side of things. Verse 6, Romans 12, I'm reading out of the Living Bible. Now listen to this. God has given each of us the ability to do certain things well. Amen. I mean, think about that. There's things that people do that you're like, Man, ain't no way I can do that right there. Wait, that's not what you're called to do. That's not your gift. That's not, that's fine. There's different parts of the body. Everybody wants to be the heart. Everybody, you, don't try to be something that you're not. It's just miserable. You're just, amen. You know, I watch some of the evangelists, because the, the men and women that we are surrounded around in, 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 the, in the ministry are just phenomenal people. And to look at somebody and go, God, I wish I, but you know what? I don't wish I could be anybody but me. Ah, glory to God. I'm the best me you will ever see. <laughs> I don't try to mimic anybody. I can learn, and we can have same, sometimes mannerisms maybe, but I've just got to be me. You just got to be you. And it's a lie from hell. Listen, the devil has lied to some of you and said, well, I just don't really have anything to offer. Yes, you do. Look, you know what some of you can offer? Just a smile and encouragement to people. Yeah. That's a nice blouse you have on today. That's a nice shirt. You look, you look sharp today. You have no idea what that can mean. Come on now. What that can mean to somebody. You can be an encourager. Amen. God has given us abilities, each one of us ability to do certain things well. So if God has given you the ability to prophesy then prophesy whenever you can. This is out of the Living Bible. As often as your faith is strong enough to receive a message from God, then you prophesy. Verse 7, if your gift is that of serving, serving others, which is helps, then serve them well. That doesn't, listen, if your, gift, if your gift is serving, then you'll know because you don't wait till somebody asks you to help. I don't see him in here right now, but he sits right here. Tommy, he's probably serving right now. He's probably do, he's doing something to help the body today, right this minute. He's somewhere, unless he's in the bathroom. 
But I remember, and now I, I, I use him as an example because I can remember when he first started coming to church, he'd been like to two services, and then we had a, a Christmas gathering together, you know, and at this place and everything. And so when we got done, we're like, look, guys, we need folks to just hang out a few minutes. We need to break these tables down. Well, I ain't got it out of my mouth good. And this boy, this boy had it about done before we could get any more help. And I looked at Pastor Kim, I said, that man right there is a servant. And he wasn't trying to impress nobody. He just, just if, look, if it's a gift that's in you, it'll come out. Now, you can suppress it if you want to, but he has the gift of serving. Can you say amen? So if your gift, verse 7, is serving others, then serve well. If you're a teacher, do a good job of teaching. Verse 8, if you're a preacher, King James says, he who exhorts. It says, if you're a preacher, see to it that your sermons are strong and helpful. Everybody say amen. amen. <laughs> is this helping anybody? Is this strong? If God has given you money, be generous in helping others with it. In other words, there's a gift. Let me tell you something. There's the gift of giving. Now, everybody should give, but there are those, there's the gift that they just, it doesn't matter. Let me say this. I'm a giver, but I, I, I'm not sure I have that gift because of this. You know, when you give, it should just be, that's it, you give. What somebody does in other words, when you give, you should, you should give in such a way that I may not get that back from them. Now, if you don't get it back and you were expecting it back, I'll tell you how you know if you're not, you don't have the gift of giving. You get mad. But if you have the, now that, that are you following what I'm saying? Now, everybody doesn't have the gift of giving, but some people do, and it doesn't matter. They're just like, you know what? I just gave it. It's just what I want to do. Yeah, I know. I'm supposed to get it back. I mean, there, but the Lord, the Lord knows all this. And are you with me? The gift of giving. But we should, how many know we all should give? If God's giving you the money, uh, 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 giving you money, be generous in helping others with it. If God's giving you an administrative ability and put you in charge of the work of others, take the responsibility seriously. Those who offer uh, comfort, which is mercy, to the sorrowing, do so with a Christian cheer. Verse 9, don't just pretend that you love others, really love them. Hate what is wrong and stand on the side of good. Verse 10, love each other with brotherly affection. As members of one family, we love each other. Amen. We, there might be some times we don't like each other, but we love each other. Come on, somebody. And take delight in honoring each other. Now go to the book of Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians chapter 4. We'll begin in verse 7. We're talking about a living, you, you are a living sacrifice. And I, you've heard this so many times. If you are born again, you have to understand. It's very simple. You are no longer your own. You are owned by Christ. Can you say amen? You're at his mercy to do what he says. However, we do have a free will. And you make a choice. You're going to serve and do what he says, or are you going to do what you want to do? Verse 7, Ephesians 4, 7. But to every one of us, grace has been given, or grace, yeah, grace has been given according to the measure of the gift of Christ. Do you remember when uh, Jesus told Paul in, in, in 2 Corinthians chapter 12, he said, my grace is sufficient for you. What he's saying is, my calling, my power on your life, that's all you need. Amen? You just, you just keep doing, I've heard, I don't know how many times the Lord's told us this. You just keep doing what I told you to do. Just keep putting one foot in front of the other. Can you say amen? Verse 8 says, this is why it says, when he ascended on high, he led captives in his train and he gave gifts to men. Verse 9, what does he ascended mean except that he also descended to the lower earthly regions? He, he who descended is the very one who ascended higher than all the heavens in order to fill the whole universe. Verse 11, it was he who gave some to be apostles, 
some to be prophets, some to be evangelists, some to be pastors and teachers. To prepare God's people for the works of service so that the body of Christ may be built up. Verse 13. Until we reach unity in the faith and in the knowledge of the Son of God and become mature, attaining the whole measure of Christ. Then we will no longer be infants. We're not babies anymore. Tossed back and forth by the waves and blown here and there by every wind of teaching and by the cunning and, and craftiness of men in their deceitful scheming. That's why you hear Pastor Kim say this just about every Wednesday night. The reason we do Wednesday night Bible study, the reason that we teach the Word of God is so that you'll know the truth, that you won't be led astray by some evil doctrine that meets your flesh. You can make this Word say whatever you want it to say. Come on, somebody. You can manipulate this thing and massage this thing to, to make your flesh feel good. But your flesh should not feel good. Your flesh should feel convicted. And like, I don't need to go that way. Come on, somebody. Not, not to the point of condemnation. Well, I feel like you beat me over the head with a stick. Well, you got it all confused. We're not beating anybody over the head with a stick. We're just preaching the word of God. What you have confused that with is conviction. And so what people do is they, I feel like I got beat up. That's because their flesh is going, I want to do it this way, though. Can you say amen? amen? Verse 15. Instead, speaking the truth in love, we will in all things grow up into him who is the head, that is Christ. From him the whole body joined and held together by every supporting ligament grows and builds itself up in love as each part does its work. Everybody say, I got my part to do. You do. See, if you're not careful, you just might lose sight of what the things of God are really all about. This whole process that we call church is not designed for you to come, sit, fold your arms, and just wait till we get done. It's not about that. It's not for you to just come and be blessed. It's not just to come and get your spiritual fix for the week. Come on, somebody. Amen. In other words, check the box. You know, been there, done that. Now I don't feel guilty for the week. You shouldn't feel guilty anyway. Sin is what makes you feel guilty. Are you still here? You're gone home yet. The whole purpose of church is for us to come to be equipped, to grow, to be trained, so that we can get outside of these walls and be the army that we're supposed to be. To get outside of the walls and tell somebody about the love of Jesus Christ. Can you say amen? And look, it's... It, well, it, it, People want to tie money to everything. It's not just about giving money. That's important, but it's rather that you give yourself. That's the key. See, it's easy sometimes to just throw money at something, but you don't give yourself. It's just like your children. You know, you throw money. Here, here take, this, take this 40 bucks. Get out of here. Go on. I'm trying to watch this TV show. Are you hearing me? Look, your children don't need your money. They need you. Can you say amen? They need you. I, and so, you know, he's done it before, and it's just, it was just so cool if you saw on Facebook to see uh, Pastor Sam with uh, his uh, second child, Ella. He just took her out on a date. She's like four, four years old. She felt like a queen. They went to Burger Queen. That's where they went. She wanted to go to Burger Queen. And she's the type that would call it Burger Queen. Hey Amen. <laughs> she's something else, buddy. Fly, the flowers and the whole works, buddy. Would have took her anywhere she wanted to go. Burger King. <laughs> Cheap date, buddy. <laughs> now. Now. <laughs> Amen. I guarantee you she'll require more than that. So your children need you. Amen. God gives you gifts and talents and anointings and abilities and grace. Why? So that it'll, on the inside of you, it'll flow out of you to further his kingdom. That's, folks, this is not a complicated thing. You've got to get on with what you're supposed to do. Can you say amen? amen. What makes God sad is to, for him to see somebody that has, has gifts that are on the inside. And they just sit dormant. Just complacent. And we, we have... We have 
reasoned not in our spirit, but we reasoned in our mind. Well, I love the Lord. He knows that. I'm going to heaven. So you know what? I'm just going to serve him, and that's it. And, you know. Come on, people. Do what he tells you to do. Can you say amen? Do what he tells you to do. You'll feel so much better. Not that you feel bad about yourself, but it was just, am I getting through to anybody? There's a whole lot of things that I could do in my life besides this. I, I, I'm a, I mean, I have talents, things that I could do. I could. You know, people talk about, well, I, I can't find a job. I'm going to tell you right now, if I didn't have a job today, by next Friday, I'd have one. My job would be to get a job. And I remember when I, this is before I even was saved. And I'm not saying, I'm just telling you that you have, you have to understand that you are somebody. And I would tell people in an interview, you know, if, I can tell you this. You won't hire anybody any better than me. You may hire some that are just as good, but you won't hire one any better. This before I was even saved. I knew I knew I was special. And I don't, that is not arrogant. How many of you could say, you just feel special? Because you are special. You're made in the image of God. I've always felt special. Nobody had to make me feel that way. I just knew. I just knew. Before I was ever even born again, I didn't get born again until I was 33 years old. Can you say Amen. See, here's the thing. I, but I have to do what I'm called to do. I can't just go do what I want to do. The river of Columbus is not, it's not about Pastor Kim and I. Come on, somebody. It's not. We, we, we stepped out and followed the calling, but it's not about us. It's about what God wants to do in the city through everyone in here. Can you say amen? Listen, I, this is just a, a letter. I want you to hear this letter. It was a few years ago. This just gives you an understanding of what, what this church means, not what we mean. Now, we're, we, we, you know, God has to use people. There's pastors. We're pastors. We're one of the five-fold ministries. But listen to this. It says here, Pastors Mike and Kim, I just want to say thank you for being the church that you are. The people that attend church here at the river are called of God and you guys are great I haven't been here long that's at the river but what I received in just a few short months is more than I received in a year or more attending church somewhere else in town I continue to go to the other church out of obligation folks don't ever go anywhere out of an obligation you go where the Lord called you to go period I received an invitation to come and worship here at the river, and I've been here ever since. I didn't have any direction in my life, and the call, my call on my life fell quiet in my heart. Once I started attending church at the river, the Lord stirred the waters of my soul. My spirit had been awake, but I was just going through the motions. Anybody ever been there before? After hearing the word being brought forth, thus saith the Lord, then I have now been renewed. The Lord has started a work within me that has been a long time coming. The river has been a blessing more than you'll ever know. You guys are on the right track. Thank you so much for listening to the Lord and stepping out in faith. The river has been a place of renewing for me. Thank you so much. Isn't that awesome? Now, again, it's not about, it's not about us. It's about you know, I, I could say it this way. You could probably, many of you could probably say the same thing since you've been worshiping with this body of believers. How you came to know, you came to, I've heard people say, I've been in church 25 years and I'm gained more revelation in the last six weeks. And Come on somebody. And it's, it's not about me. I'm just a vessel. We, we just, amen. Amen. I'm trying to say amen. Well, what was that? Stick around here long enough, you'll understand that you're more spirit than you are flesh. And when you get to that point, that's why things like that happen. Because your spirit wants to speak. And your spirit don't speak 
English. He speaks an unknown tongue. Hallelujah. Amen. And it's not for a show. There's no show to it. It's a feeling. I don't, I don't mean F-E-E-L-I-N-G. It's an F-I-L-L-I-N-G. You need the fire of God. You need the fire of ha. God. Mm. You need the fire of God more than you need breath in your body. It's the fire of God that's going to get you through that situation. I promise you. Amen. See, here's the thing. If you don't do what you're supposed to do, if you don't do what God's called you to do, it is possible that somebody might miss their blessing. They might miss their breakthrough. Why are you putting too much pressure on me, Pastor? I'm just ch I'm doing my best to challenge you to be to live a sacrificial life, doing what the Lord called you to do. Those of you that go out on the street and minister, is 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 uh, is I don't want to use the word difficult. As as difficult as it might have been at the beginning, getting out and talking to people, once. Once you got into that flow and you begin to, you get more comfortable, there's nothing like leading somebody to Jesus. There's no, listen, you go, you go to be a blessing to people, but in turn, you walk home that day and, and go home on a Saturday and you go, I, I, I don't think I could be any more blessed. To be able to lead somebody to the Lord? Can you say amen? And so if you don't know you're calling, though, there's one right there. Every one of us is called to preach the gospel. I think people get so confused, they, they get full of God, and they get on fire, and they, they, they i got to quit my job, and i got to go preach. No, don't. No! God needs people in the workplace, too. Can you say amen? You only go into the five-fold ministry if the Lord calls you, and just because you feel the fire of God, that don't mean you're supposed to go be the preacher and the teacher and evangelist. I mean... Again, we're all supposed to proclaim the gospel. That's what's inside you. Just let it come out. Amen. Go to 1 Peter 4 real quick. 1 Peter chapter 4. There are things, folks, that God's putting. You need to understand this. There are anointings on the inside of you that God has placed on the inside of you that people need. You, you Look. You're not on vacation today. You're in here. So an amen is fine. Amen. God's put giftings and ability. The things that he's put on the inside of you, you have to understand, did you know they're supernatural? There's, now, there's natural giftings you have, but on the spiritual side of things, it's supernatural. You'll, you'll do supernatural things. Amen. 1 Peter chapter 4. God has made each one of us as gifts to others. You're a, everybody say this. Say, I, I am a gift am a to the body of Christ. You are. You're a gift to the body of Christ. Amen. And the purpose of that gift is that it flow out of you into this world. That's what it's there for. You don't think of yourself as anything. I mean, we, I don't think of myself as anything other than I'm a, and I don't mean that in a, you know, we're just supposed to be. No, I'm just saying that only through Christ can I do these things. Because with Christ, all things are possible. All, that's a lot of things that are possible. All things. Amen. First Peter chapter 4, verse 10, real quick. First Peter 4, 10. As every man has received the gift, even so minister the same one to another as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. Now, many times when you see this word steward, you know, people think of money. But in this particular verse here, we are stewards. It's, it's a, it means a little more. We are steward, we're managers of something greater than just money. Amen. 
Uh, listen, you need to understand something about money. Money, money is just first grade stuff, people. It's just first grade stuff. Matter of fact, Jesus even called money the least. He said, he said in Luke 16, 10, he said, He that is faithful in that which is the least will also be faithful in much. So money, you can be faithful with money, but yet still be in the first grade. Are you with me? Are you following what I'm saying here? God wants us to move on to second, third, fourth, and, and just on to different grade, different levels. You, you just look at it in the natural as grade school, you know. You just you keep graduating. You keep, you keep getting more understanding and knowledge, and you move forward. Can you say amen? I mean, can you remember? You remember, uh, how many of you were ever in the first grade? I got people that's not raising their hand. Everybody was in the, surely everybody was in the first grade, weren't they? Do you remember in the first grade or somewhere around there? You, you learned to read. And it was like a miracle to you. See, that's like, that's like salvation. It's like at the very beginning. You know, you, how many, I'm, I'm dating myself here now, but you go home. I can remember first and second grade, learning to read, go home, get the paper out, get the comic. Now, I didn't understand what it was meaning and all, but I thought of something I could read the comics to my parents. Come on. Is that, any young people understand what I'm saying? Because all of you older ones, you either asleep or you didn't read at all. I don't know what the deal is. Yeah. C.J. C-Spot. Remember? See Jane and Spot. You see Jane run, you see Spot run. It, didn't, I, it, it doesn't even make any sense. It's just reading those words, right? But you follow what I'm saying. It's no different with God. It's time for some of you to get out of the first grade and at least, at least get to the second grade. Can you say amen? Move on to the next level. Share your testimony. Some of you have never, ever, well, I just don't, they don't have a testimony. If, you, if you're born again, you have a testimony. If you're born again, you have, well, yeah, but I mean, you know, I got born again when I was like six. And I don't Never done anything wrong. And it, what a great testimony. What a fabulous testimony. Just tell them, I got born again when I was six. I, six I've never done anything wrong in my life. I'm just about as close to perfect as you can get. <laughs> just testify. Of, and see, here's the thing about testi testifying. You obviously testify what the Lord's done for you, right? But in that testimony, not only what the Lord's done for you, but you can just relate that, that you know what, he's done the same thing for you as you testify to somebody. Testify what the Lord's done for them, what the Lord has done for mankind. We share, come on somebody, we share our personal testimony, but you know what, you can just say, you know what, you could live just the same way. Why do you always seem to be so happy and you just, it's just the peace of God. Are you going to have a bad day every now and then? I, hey, you might. I said it, I think I said it, this would be the, I think the third week in a row. If I ever complained about anything again, I ought to be ashamed of myself. I got nothing to complain about. All my, all my family saved. Everyone, they're going to heaven. Oh, my God. Isn't that awesome? Amen. Four children. All of them full of the Holy Ghost. Only one never did anything wrong in her life. And everybody knows who that is. <laughs> She's smiling. <laughs> Y'all can laugh. You can smile. Look, I realize here at the river that the majority of you the majority of people that have ever put their foot in this church come and gone because there are people that come and go all the time. You have more revelation and understanding and, 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 and wisdom about the word of God than probably more than half of the Christians on the face of the earth. Amen. You understand. You, 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 you. However, we don't just stop. Some of you still need to jump in and do a little swimming. Come on now. 
Find out how the temperature of the water is. Sitting on, you, I've said it this way, you, you can sit on the bank for a little while, but we're going to start splashing water up on that bank. And, and, and that's what we're doing today. We're splashing water on that bank, and you, you're trying to hold yourself on that bank. It's getting slippery. And when you slip, <laughs> when you slip and, and you tumble down that hill, and you fall in that water, let me tell you something. Just the first time you hit that water, your eyes are going to come wide open. And where you thought you was going to drown, you're going to say, I should have been swimming a long time. Come on, somebody. Amen. We're good at golf claps around here. I'm telling you, we're really good. I, I say it all the time. I, I, didn't, sing, I didn't just put a five-foot putt in. I, that, that was like a 42-footer right there. <laughs> She's my cheerleader. <laughs> Sometimes you just got to start to find out. Are oh, you understand what I mean? I mean, I remember years ago, this was quite some time ago, in the church, they're like you sitting out there, and some of the leaders of the church thought that I'd be a good candidate to uh, be a youth leader, pastor, whatever. <laughs> I don't like young people. It's, it's, it's enough to try to get adults to just at least abide by the rules. They're not funny. They're <laughs> they aggravate me. <laughs> Boy, I'm painting a really good picture. I'm a, I'm a, you're a mean guy. No, I just don't like young people. I, mean, <laughs> I like little kids. I don't know how to get out of this. Just, I guess just keep telling the truth. <laughs> but you know what? I, I, I went for a swim. <laughs> I went out there. I, I, it, come on. And we, it, it actually was Spud and I. We did it together. And we were, we were, we were somewhat successful. <laughs> I mean, I think. But that, listen, see, that's, the, my, that's my point. I learned something from it, though. Or maybe I just confirmed what I already knew. <laughs> Anybody know what I'm talking about? You, sometimes you just got to go, you just got to take a step and go, okay, you know what? I'm going to give this a shot right here. I'm talking about if you just don't know, you know, like, okay, all right. But you'll find out. It's okay if that's not it, right? Amen. I, I learned from it. I really did. Are you still in First Peter 4? Verse 10. God has given each one of you, or each one of us, a gift from his great variety of spiritual gifts. Use them well to serve one another. God didn't give you a gift just so you could be good. He gifted you so you could give. Amen. Giving of those gifts back to the body, that's what qualifies you of being a good steward. So, the gift that the Lord's given you, if you, the only way you can be called a good steward is if you take that gift and you deposit into other people. If you're not making that deposit, then according to the Word of God, you're not being a good steward of what God has put on the inside of you. Amen. That's a fact, people. Verse 11. Are you called to preach? Then preach as though God himself were speaking through you. Are you called to help others? Do it with all your strength and energy that God supplies so that God will be glorified through Jesus Christ. To Him be the glory and power forever and ever. Amen. The whole process of church is not for you just to come sit and watch. It's not just to come and learn. And, and it, yes, you do come to learn, but you come to learn and grow so that you can get outside of these walls and do something with it. Can you say amen? Remember Ephesians 4.11. He gave some to be apostles. He gave some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors, and some teachers. That's the five-fold ministry. That group listed there in Ephesians 4.11 are not the only ones that are designed to do anything in the ministry. They are designed and equipped to equip the sheep to get outside of the walls and make a difference for the kingdom of God. Can you say amen? How many of you are doing that? 
We got work to do, don't we? Doing something for the kingdom of God. All of the great men, women of God that, that teach the word that you have learned from, all their teaching, really, in all honesty, look, they're doing everything they can to break the word down, to share it with you, to help you, to equip you. But it's all in vain if you don't do anything with it. It just sits dormant. It's not just so you can know more truth. It's not so you can just gain more knowledge and revelation and say, well, let me just tell you how much I know. Amen. But rather for you to be more effective for the kingdom. You have to see yourself. You, you, you have to look at yourself as a soldier in the army. And you have a job to do. That's why one of the things I love about Columbus is Fort Benning. Because soldiers, when soldiers attend the, the river, it's so, it's so gratifying to teach them because they understand authority. They understand orders. Can you say, they, they follow the instructions. They understand that they each got each other's back. That we don't leave anybody behind. We're not, come on somebody. I got your back. And I'm not talking about talking behind your back. I got your back. Somebody talks about you, I'm going to say, wait a minute, you don't know Mickey Malo like. You don't know him like I know him. If you're going to talk, to him, talk about him like that around me, we're not going to hang out because I know him. Come on, somebody. Amen. Hallelujah. I got your back. You hear me? Come on, Jonathan, this morning. See, here's the thing. This is the thing about the river of Columbus. Not about us. It's about what happens here. We do our very best, as well as others in the, in, in, in the church, to challenge you daily to follow the call of God on your life, to see lives changed, those lives around, you know, go preach the gospel to all the world. Look, folks, you don't have to go. If God hadn't called you to Mozambique, don't go there. How about just your next door neighbor? How about that one? You see them out there cutting the grass. You, your house is only like 12 feet separated from the other one. Well, I don't know what to say. Hey, you want a, you want a cold glass of water? I, you'll figure something out. Well, I just don't know what to really say. Invite them to church. I'll tell them. I'll, I'll say to them. Invite them to church. Amen. Did you know the body builds the church? I, 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 I can't build it all by myself. Sheep beget sheep. Amen. Stand to your feet this morning. Hallelujah. Turn it up just a little bit, Jonathan. Janet, come stand right here. Come stand right here.
Every head bow, every eye closed for just a moment. I see the foundation of a road. And it's, it's, the foundation of the road has been, it's been made. It's like with the big road graders. The, it's like a dirt road. So the Lord wants you to know that the road is already being formed. But there's still a process of putting down the crush and run and and then, then the pavement, and then the striping. and So there's still, there's still a process that's happening. But the road is being made as we speak. You just stay faithful. You stay faithful. And before long, you will get to ride on that road. And you'll end up at a destination. Does the road stop there? I, I, I don't know. I don't know that much. But you will end up at the destination. But just the Lord wants you to know that it's being formed. Don't be impatient. Well, why is it taking so long? It doesn't matter. I don't know. I just see the road. And it's not fully formed yet. But that's the process that it goes through. You know, it's amazing how the Lord will give you natural examples so that you can see, because it'll make sense to you. Amen? Mickey, come stand right here. good. Lord, I thank you for your word that by your stripes we're healed. Lord, you didn't go and pray and beg the Father to heal anyone. You just spoke to the situation. So we've done it already. We'll just do it again just for good measure. But by the authority of the blood of Jesus Christ that he shed on the cross, the lashes he took upon his back, that by your stripes were healed. We curse, listen to me, cancer. Listen to me by the authority of the word of God that lives and dwells on the inside of us. You dry up and leave, never ever to return. We curse it, just like Jesus cursed the fig tree. And in moments, the roots begin to dry up. And it astounded the disciples. But it doesn't astound us. For we know the Word of God, and the Word of God is true and powerful. So we thank you for your healing power. Miracle. 
signs and wonders. We're not moved by what we feel, not what we see. We're moved by what we believe. We believe your word is true. So we've claimed it, and we thank you for it. In the name that's above every name, in the strong name, Son of Jesus Christ. He's the Son. The Son of God. Whew, glory. Thank you for the anointing, Lord. Powerful anointing. That you will live. <laughs> you will live and be prosperous and testify of the goodness of God. Of the glory of God. The glory of God. Thank you that the fire burns bright, hot. What a testimony. What a testimony. What the enemy meant for bad, God changes for good and for his glory. Amen. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Lift your hands to heaven. Mickey. Mickey, Mickey, Mickey. Put your hands on his back. Just There you go, just like that. Stretch your hands this way. Lord, I thank you right now that every bone in Mr. Foskey's body, every single bone lubricate, every joint, all down the spine, in the shoulders, in the knees, in the hips. Yes, Jesus. It's just like in the movie, you can see the tin man. They need it all. Lord, I thank you for the anointing oil. Yes. Every single joint. <laughs> Neck, back, Hallelujah. hips, ankles, knees, toes, fingers, wrist, elbow. Fire. The fire of God. Thank you, Father, that tonight will be the best night of sleep he's had in his entire life. We give you the glory and the praise and the honor. In Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. He's going to sleep good tonight. Hallelujah. Got it? Got it? John, step out right here. Lift your hands to heaven. You come too far. You've come too far already. Lord, I thank you that your word says that the joy of the Lord is our strength. Lord, I thank you that you spoke restoration. You spoke it. it. It's there. I thank you, Father, that this week, this coming week, you'll blow his mind. He, he, he's not going, it's going to be hard to believe. I thank you, Father, that you're turning sadness to joy. 
unspeakable, glory to God, and full of glory. Thank you for that anointing, Lord, that comes when we least expect it. Wow. What a great week. What a great week. What a great week. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Lord, we love you so much. Thank you, Father. That we had an opportunity to come in here today to be a part of the body of Christ, to be a part of your body. That each person was challenged today by your word to stand up and fulfill the call to release the gifts, the talents that are on the inside of us. Not so that we might be glorified, but that you might be glorified, that the kingdom of God would flourish. And that when we take our last breath, then we would hear, well done, thy good and faithful servant. Enter into the rest of God. That's our goal. And I thank you, Father, for the, for the river of Columbus because the, the river of Columbus is made up of people that follow your leading and that we make a difference in our community, make a difference in our city. Not, again, so that we could be known, but that you could be glorified. We give you all the glory, all the honor, all the praise, all the thanksgiving. In Jesus' mighty name, and everybody said, Amen. Amen. God bless you. Hug somebody's neck on the way out. Don't forget tomorrow night.